uh, being a part of this. And I was looking at how can we use this. I don't know if you, you know, maybe some of you are familiar with the environmental devastation in the Niger Delta because of, of the oil exploration and, and production, and oil pollution. And um, so I spent time with the youth in the community trying to see how I can, uh, in, in a series of creative workshops, you know, some workshops with strippers on um, filmmaking, photography, costume design, uh, graphic design, sculptural making, and to try and see how I can um, provide skills, you know, to these young people. And in the process, they will also become part of, you know, a collaborative, you know, process that I was, I was developing. And, um, and over the course of um, one year, I did a performance intervention and then returned back to Oxford. Uh, but because of the urgency, I, this, there was a lot of you know, complex issues, uh, very social deficits, you know, environmental issues that I was, it was sort of unbearable. So I was looking at ways that I could return back to Nigeria and all continue the project, which I did. I used to visit Nigeria, you know, um, and spent like three, four months in developing this project. And so the use, the, the subjects and the actors you see in the film and in the, in the uh, 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 images, the pictures, are, uh, are from the community. They, they, they were actively involved in making this work. Um, it became a space where they could also tell their own stories, you know, individual stories. And for me, I was looking at how can we, how can I employ the idea of indigenous environmentalism, uh, drawing out of this methodologies and, and, and local rituals, um, you know, folklore, and to see how all that can be fused in to tell this very, Futuristic story, if you will, and uh, why futuristic? Because um, I wouldn't really have been having conversation with Matt We had a conversation the other day about Afrofuturism. So for me, I wanted to extend, you know, or to redefine what is Afrofuturism. You know, for me, I think um, it, it's a space for imagination, not the kind of floating imagination that you know. We, we, we dream of, you know, the future, African future, although we have our own futures. But I was, I'm thinking about how that space could, um, could, could be transformative. You know, how that imagination could transform into action. You know, the fact that we imagine these young people being part of this thing, and we give them skills, you know, and that skills, now becomes manifested in the making of the film and in the making of the photographic images. And then they also have the skill that they can go on to have their private or, you know, uh, uh, um, small mini enterprise, you know, and, and go on with it. So I, the work sort of had this kind of double ontological status in the sense that it is used as an artwork to respond to these issues, to highlight these environmental issues, this very extractive capitalism and it's also an artwork you know that also highlights and it goes as far as um, being a, a space or a process for empowerment you know how do you empower these young people and how could this work become how could you create space for a generative future so that is what this the idea of this work is all about um, some, some of you might wonder about the frame. Um, the frame sort of encapsulates the image, but there is something very special and unusual about this the frame, because all the participants sleep with the material, and for certain they because then they bring it back to the studio where I actually paint it, and then um, sew it, and then use it to sort of embellish the wall. So that's the materiality about, you know, that, you know, the, the frame. And uh, most of, 
you know, the, uh, the sculptures are repurposed like this. This came from, this was a shabby uh, floater that came to, the, uh, to, to one of the communities that I saw some young kids sitting down. It was black in color. So I had a small chat with them. What are you guys doing? They said they're just talking and dreaming about your life, wishing that things could be better. So I said, could you mind borrowing this? So I could, I could take it to my studio and, and see what I can do with it. And I took it to the studio, I sort of repurposed it and brought it back. And then engaged the youth to sit down and, and actually dream. And it became part of you know, the moving image in the film and also was captured on a photographic image. So you see how you know, the, you know, the transformation of materials you know, and also the transformation of, 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 of participants. You know, so that was the process of making the work. Um, socially engaged art practice, uh, inviting community engagement and intervention. Um, it, it, it's, it's, it's a new way of working. I mean, and it's not, not really a new way, it's, it's been going on for years, but I was trying to look at it as things as kind of socially engaged art practice, a way uh, that it can incorporate studio based photographic making, sculptural making, film making, performance, you know, all, you know, as an interdisciplinary content specific uh, project. So, uh, and, and this is what the work is all about. Um, were, uh, were, the, were, the, were, the, were the young people keen to get going or did you have to recruit quite hard? They were quite excited because um, I realized that um, when you mention, when you tell them about, you know, the reality, I mean, the, the life they are living, and how this work is set as a kind of, you know, visual activism, mm -hmm. they are interested in telling their own story. So why it's, it's a platform that they, they, they have, you know, to tell their own story. So they were quite excited. And, you know, when you remind them about folklore, the grandmother used to tell them all, or some of the traditional practice, ritual practice, that are quite excited about it. They're not like um, young people in the university who are kind of, you know, um, you know, those things have to do with evil spirits and bad, you know. And you know, they 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 very colonial mentality, if you if you will. Um, so they were quite receptive, you know, to the process and um, and it was quite empowering for them. And the response when they first saw the finished product? Uh, they were blown away, you know, they were blown away and um, as, as we're talking, they need to see the photograph that their yeah, image is in some way in London and this is very empowering for them, you know, uh, that, you know, their story has been told, you know, um, and, you know, from their local community, you know, to a place like London and other places. So, uh, they're quite happy about it and, um, and it doesn't stop there, you know, currently, the proceeds that comes out of this work is used to build an art center for these young people. So you see that the work has this kind of generative, you know, um, you know, levels that continues. So, um, but I think you know the work of they 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 um, they carry some kind of energy power, you know. The image of significant power uh, that demands, you know, that we tap into our environment of thought and action. You know, they, they demand your empathy. You know, empathy for for the other, for the marginalized, uh, for the disenfranchised. Um, so it's, it's beyond the beautiful thing that you see here. But um, it's sort of um, it's an invitation, it's a proposal, you know, for you to dig inside. And, and, and understand that very context and the reality of human condition in the 19th century. I know if you have any questions, please. It's a question. Yeah. <laughs> I would, um, first of all, congratulations on this um, extremely book where you both the exhibition. Thank you. I would have a question just to ask you to maybe elaborate a bit more about the intergenerational aspect of the work. Because as you said, for the 
young people. Right. They re engage with some of the stories from their traditions that I think their grandparents uh, had. But also, I'm, just, I'm struck by the caption of this film, right. whereby um, you allude to the fact that this all well, all well, all well, all well, is from the community. Right. This uh, conflict, inner conflict between doing his job and what that enables him to do in the right life of his families, but right. also the devastation that's happening to, to the environment. Right. Because I'm uh, thinking about maybe at the start, and you know, this is a little bit of a conversation started, people right. never envisioned right. how devastating it's going to be in the hands of young men and women. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you for your question. Um, yes, uh, that, you know, as I was telling Matt, you know, this, this walk sort of, um, it's, it's a kind of autobiographical, if you will, in a sense, you know, because I am coming from a home where my dad was the first indigenous um, uh, executive manager in Exxon Mobil. And my senior brother went on to work with Shell as a manager. So my father wanted all of us to be working up and all contained so that we can make a good living. And um, and but we didn't see the they didn't see the repercussion. My junior brother had just retired, you know, and um, after working next to Mobile because they just exhausted. But I, I realized that after my father became, you know, an executive manager, he, he didn't have a life. But he we had, you know, we had material things comfort of life, but I, I think something was missing. And I was studying engineering, you know, my first year I dropped out because I felt something was wrong somewhere. And at that same time, I think in sort of who I, who I really had mad was executed by the military and it was, you know, all related, if you will. So I, I met on my mind to become an artist. So you see that transgression from that one man now being captured by the indigenous people, and then at some point he sort of, um, if you look at the walk, from the place, from the moment he's captured, uh, all the subjects are women, you know, so this is another thing about, you know, uh, another level of conversation that I would like to elaborate, you know, that in the 90s there was like some tribes, like my tribe, women are very powerful, you know, um, and we have a different take on feminism, you know, and, and I think, so you see that women actually give life mm -hmm. to that poor man, you know, you know, from that moment he was killed, you know, till the, till the end. So I, I wanted to also touch on that, like black feminism, you know, and from the Niger Delta perspective. Um, there are people who are still practicing these traditional knowledge and have spent, you know, traditional minded men and women have spent an enormous time with them, you know, listening to their stories and being inspired by their practice, and also trying to see how I can, you know, um, incorporate some of that in my film and in my practice, in my performance acting there. So I, um, so yeah, but I think it's really interesting because um, as much as young people are not really interested in knowing about traditional culture, it is a level of
Right. You're having in the university with do within doing the PhD. Because oh, there was right. a point where right. um, things just got stuck. Right. In terms of the supervisory kind of understanding of the work. Absolutely. Because uh, I, I, I was thrown out, you know, during my PhD for about four or five years. Yeah. You know, because my supervisor was not happy with the fact that I I was working with a certain you know, I didn't plan to work with rural people, but you know, they seem to be the one who are receptive to these ideas. You know, they seem to be the one who are connected to the spirit of the land, the spirit of the water. So it was it was effortless. And and um, that was the number number one issue. The number the second issue is she wanted me to deal maybe the images that came out from there to be what it is. Sort of what I think should remind me of African poverty porn. You know, go to the they just film there because they are, you know, they, they look, you know, very, you know, destitute, you know, poor people. Um, I mean I can do that, but they were not very receptive. They wanted to wear the mask. Because the woman the woman the way that mask the women the way that masquerade, the women that become a masquerade, they are transformed into something else. They embody the spirit of the land. So the mask here is the costume. The mask here is the makeup. The mask here is the headrest that reminds them of the cultural traditions. And that was very interesting. And you tell somebody, oh, you're going to be black, and you're going to wear this, and you're like, oh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> You know, so you can feel that in them. You're kind of awakening, you know, that lost, that suppressed, repressed voice, you know, of their ancestors. So, um, you know, it was it was quite interesting that they were they were they were so fond of me. Like when we go, we would start drinking and dancing, you know, and all that, and you know, we start singing songs, you know, like the songs that our grandparents used to sing that everyone has forgotten, and they were like, "Wow, where are you from?" I can't tell them that I'm, from, I'm coming from Europe because they wouldn't believe me, you know. And, um, and my parents used to ask me, look, you have a better life in Europe, what are you doing in the village? And some people went as far as saying, okay, maybe the demons have called him back, you know, they don't want him to progress. And some of my friends in Lagos asked me, look, you used to be a painter, are you still practicing? Because you spend time in the village. Are you a social worker? I said, I'm both artist and social worker, if you will. I mean, but this is what came out for me. And I, and yeah, so that's, that's the journey, you know. Any other question, Kevin? Hi, uh, thank you. Yeah. For your, for your excursion. My name is Simon, my interest is in uh, supply chains. Right. And whether it be from India, whether it be from Africa or South America, my interest is always where are things coming from, where are they coming to, and where are they going back to. Right. And my question was um, when the youth um, were seeing what you've just said to us. Right. From a Western perspective, I know there's so many natural uh, healthy solutions right. for, the, for the energy, for building materials, whatever the word session is that shows for. Right. Which exists in Africa, for example, just look at that continent. Mm -hmm. But maybe only 1% of the submissions actually are given attention. So, with this exhibition we've done, the youth in the age, they know the problems and they've explained it to us. But has there been any venture into your youth who see this? What do you want to see after this? What do you want us to see? Out of okay, the oil is maybe stripped away. How do we translate the solutions or the thoughts that the youth have to actually um, progress and bring forward the ideas out of Africa as well? Right. Um, I mean, you know, this. Thank you for your question, first of all. But it, uh, you know, all these strategies, you know, happen in different levels. Uh, my focus on this project was to see how I can empower, make them change agents, agents of change, mm -hmm. in telling their own stories. 
in being a part of this project, in transforming their own world, in building the impossible images or objects. And first of all, you have to give them education, isn't it? Because if you don't, I mean, when I was in Nigeria, I knew there was something wrong with, you know, all pollution, but until I moved to Europe, until I moved to UK, that I could look back and see, because of the campaigns that were going on, you know, in Europe at that time, about the issues that we have in it. But it's very difficult for you to see that issue, you know, you don't, you have to go to the villages way that are really, you know, affected by this uh, extractive capitalism, you know. And um, so, the first thing was to give them skills. Because sometimes I have to pay for the, you know, I, I pay for the um, mini enterprise after they finish working with people because they need, they need to move on. I've given them skills, so what's next? The government are not interested. So I have to give them money, some funds, to set them up. So I work with about 200 youth. So the first thing is to give them education. And, and that, is, that is my own you know, way of just that consciousness. First of all, is the consciousness that something is wrong. You can't keep on suffering and smiling, like Bella would say, you know, in his music. Uh, but we have to change things. We have to have that consciousness that there's something wrong with our environment. And we have, we have to be ready to tell the stories. And let me tell you something, when I went to the university, you have been to universities in Nigeria, you know the, the middle class mentality, you know, in Vegas, you know. And I remember telling young people that they are going to be a, we, are, we have to do a film about, you know, our environment. And, oh, I want to be an artist, uh, I'm going to do this, you know, like, you know, it was all fun, you know. But, you know, we are talking about something serious here. So I realized that I couldn't pass that message to them because they're not ready. That's, that's the cultural mentality, you know. And so, uh, for me, the next step is this academy. Because what academy does is to educate people. Is to give them that consciousness to understand, to be equipped with a, a different mindset. And this is just the way forward. Because without that, nothing can happen. The government are not ready. They're not even interested in what I'm doing. So I think, um, you know, the, the next step is, you know, after the consciousness, is education. So that they can be equipped with, with knowledge, you know, to be able to fight for their right, for human rights. Any other questions?